Hey everyone, my name is Ryan from Interview Kickstart and today we're going to be going through a sample data modeling question. So before we begin the agenda, uh, we're going to be going through a design question uh, to create a data model for a library information system. Uh, we'll go through getting requirements, breaking them down and using uh, the parsed out requirements to come up with what we're going to be implementing in an ERD and schema. Uh, we're also going to recap some general concepts on DDL and constraints. And we'll also go through some SQL questions where one, we're going to be seeing the DDL, uh, if we had to write the DDL for the library data model that we're going to be creating. And two, we're going to go through some sample questions, um, about the, uh, use of the schema we come up with to answer certain questions about our system. And with that, we're going to get to our question. So here we have a prompt. Uh, you can pause it if you need more time to read through it. But so the prompt says, design a relational database for a library information system, create an ERD and schema, DDL for our design. Um, the ERD should contain one many-to-many -many relationship. Um, then below it has two additional SQL questions to answer um, uh, uh, from our design. So at first glance, uh, it kind of seems like we don't really have requirements on what we need to implement in our ERD and schema. Um, but what happens is you, so this is one of those questions where I would say, if you look at the SQL questions, really paying attention to those is what's going to actually help you decide what are the tables, entities, and columns that I'm going to need to keep track of. So basically, as we go through entering the questions, we should be referring back to the SQL questions uh, to sort of tell, remind ourselves that like whatever design we come up with, it should be able to answer those SQL questions. So, um, breaking that down is actually what's going to tell you and give you requirements and tell you what you need to be tracking in your system. So the way I would approach it is basically first, uh, I would kind of start breaking it down from what we just have, uh, in the initial prompt, right? So let me, if I get. A pen. So if we start to kind of break it down, so we first have um, pretty generic information, right? We need an ERD, scheme and DDL, pretty self-explanatory, one many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, um, most likely we're going to have multiple, but it's just that required that in our solution, we're going to need one. Okay, so that's pretty high level. But if we sort of get into breaking down the actual SQL questions, that's where we sort of get interesting, uh, get some interesting details on what we actually need to implement in, in our solution, right? So it says we're going to be, we're going to want to track how many copies of the book. So now it's getting interesting because it's telling me, okay, so in my system, I'm going to be kept tracking books. Um, I'm going to be tracking multiple copies of a book. So it sounds like there's going to be a book, then the library can likely have multiple copies. So I'm going to need entities to track that. Uh, so we want to track how many are currently in the library and how many of them are checked out. Again, this is giving us details about how our system is going to function. So it looks like there's multiple copies of a book. Um, we're also, and we want to track, um, as people borrow them and as people return them, right? So we're going to be tracking how many, let's say if there, maybe there's 10, 10 copies total. So we want to see if there's six that are checked out and four that are available. Um, so we're going to want to keep track of that. We're also likely going to be keeping track of those transactions that happen to check those six out, most likely when they were checked out and so on, right? Um, find the books that have been checked out the most. So yeah, so kind of like we thought before, uh, the transactions, I'm going to be tracking how many times a certain book has been checked out and their associated users, right? So, okay, so like who's checking out books? So that tells me I probably, I'm probably going to be keeping track of members and people who are actually checking out these books. Okay, so as you can see, if you look into the actual question, we're getting our requirements for what our design is going to be like from the SQL questions. So again, our requirements haven't been given directly to us, but we're sort of teasing it out uh, from the information we've been given. So, okay. So now we got kind of like, after breaking it down initially, I'd sort of review and look at what what we have so far, right? So we know that our goal is to, to design an ERD schema and DDL for the prompt that I've been given, right? Um, and it's for a library system and it has one many to many relationship and it accomplishes, it accomplishes a couple of things. So, and then all these points we've sort of gotten from the, uh, the way we broke down the SQL question. So the library can contain multiple copies of the same book. That's from that first SQL question. Um, tracks which copies are checked out and which aren't. Okay. That makes sense because we were going to keep track of how many are in 
available for checkout and not. Um, historical record of how many times a book has been checked out. Again, we're keeping track of who's tracking, who's checking books out, um, how many times it's been returned. So because we want to, it's that cycle, second SQL question where we want to track, uh, how many have been checked out the most. Uh, and then we have members and there's, they're the people who are checking out the books. And that's what we want to be able to, uh, we want to keep track of that data point too. Okay. So. We basically have an initial set of requirements, but one thing to remember is again, uh, when you're in an actual interview situation, uh, most likely the interviewer is going to leave some key detail out. Um, there's going to be some ambiguity because what they want, they're expecting you to do is sort of ask them questions, um, and have a conversation to really tease out, um, uh, how they want you to implement the system. So there's going to be details to leave out. Again, this is basically because they want to see when you're on the actual job, how are you going to be talking to stakeholders to gather requirements and how are you going to uh, take their thoughts and um, change that into technical client, technical requirements for when you do these types of uh, database designs or data modeling um, tasks at work. So, okay. So again, you'd want to ask uh, clarifying questions. And the thing is, um, when you do ask those clarifying questions, what they also, what they would also want to see, um, particularly from more senior candidates is that you're able to add some real world context into the question. So you can see that it's, that, so you want to show that you understand it's not just a technical exercise, but, um, you're getting, you're able to see how it applies into the real world. So that might involve adding some complexity. Um, so you want to basically show that you're able to incorporate best practices and understand what the business objective is, not just this is a data modeling exercise that I'm doing for the sake of uh, data modeling, right? So, okay, so like, let's assume that we had that scenario where we talked uh, through requirements with the interviewer, and then we have some additional requirements that they want us to track. Um, that again, um, brings in some real world, con real world context to our application. So let's say in addition to books, the library also has periodicals. So magazines with multiple issues. Okay, so similar design as uh, how we had books, multiple copies of a book, multiple copies of a magazine makes sense in the real world. Uh, libraries can have multiple types of things that are available for checkout, right? Uh, library also tracks authors and publishers. Okay. So maybe they're keeping track of how many authors have published, how many books and, and so on. Uh, okay. Now we're getting into a bit more details about members. So library memberships are given to members and there's different membership tiers. Okay. So maybe some memberships are paid, some are free. Makes sense. The library would likely have that. Uh, each tier has a different max number of books that can be checked out and late fees. Okay. So that makes sense that if there's different membership tiers, there's different rules that apply with them. So some maybe have more late days. Maybe if there's free memberships that has a lower leniency period and so on. Uh, we also track employees with their own membership tier and different rules. Okay. That makes sense. Um, if the library has people working with them, uh, they're going to track their memberships and uh, have them as employees. And the last point here, they also track the late fee penalties that members incur. Makes sense because if we're checking, uh, if we're tracking those transactions, the library also likely wants to track um, how many books are outstanding, how much late fees they might have collected throughout the year, how many, how much is outstanding and so on. Okay, so from here, it seems like we have, uh, yeah, so it seems like there we have like a better picture of what we want to um, uh, solve for. And so you see here, the top here, this is basically our initial set of requirements. And then here, this was the additional context we got from talking to the interviewer. So what I would do is be at this point, now I have my requirements and from here you can actually really tease out uh, what are my entities, tables and so on. So I would go right into basically breaking down, breaking those down as we kind of go, right? So from the, I can see, I can start to identify what the attributes and entities are. So most likely in an interview, you've kept track uh, on a notepad or on the whiteboard. So you're basically going to be going through that and scribbling down uh, what you're going to be doing in your design before you start whiteboarding. So in our case, as we go, okay, so it says library can contain multiple copies of the same book. Okay, so those are likely two different entities where I have a book entity and then there's some other entity that's going to track instances of a book, basically. Uh, tracks what's checked out. Okay, that's probably something that has to do with transactions that's occurring as time goes on, right? 
a uh, historical record of how many times a book's been checked out. Again, same thing, most likely with the transactions, uh, members who are checking out books. Okay, there's probably a memberships entity um, that also joins to that transaction table. Um, and okay, so like, as you see, like now I'm sort of starting to put together, okay, here's this entity, it's going to join to the transaction entity. And like, now I'm sort of starting to form a picture in my head. Um, but yeah, like we're going to go down and break through every, break down everything, right? So, uh, we keep going. There's the periodicals with multiple issues, likely the same design as the book. Um, a library keeps track of authors and publishers. Okay. So it looks like those are, uh, sort of like, mm, we can call them like dimension entities where, um, that's probably going to join to a book or a periodical. And so I can see how many times, uh, they've published something or written something. Uh, memberships are given to tier membership. Memberships are given to members and there's different membership tiers. Uh, again, this is probably a dimension thing that joins to some membership or rather member or user entity, how, depending on how I actually want to implement it. Um, and that's this membership tier entities where I'm going to get those, uh, rules that we mentioned before, like max number of books, um, late fees and so on. Um, keep going. Uh, we likely have a entity for employees that also ha joins to that membership tier dimension, uh, and the late fee penalties. Okay. I, and again, that's probably with the membership tier dimension, because if we remember from the requirements, the different tiers will have different rules and penalties. Okay. So I've sort of broken down my requirements. Um, and I, I sort of have an idea and you saw as I did that, I sort of had, I was forming the picture in my mind of what the um, joins and what the entities are going to be and what it's going to look like. So now I'm basically ready to step into the data modeling solution. Um, and again, we're in for this example, we're going to go through all three steps, conceptual, logical, and then physical modeling. So, okay. So if we were to start conceptual modeling, um, the way I would approach it for this one, uh, remember we had those initial set of requirements and then some additional context from the interviewer. So what I would do is first do a conceptual model with the initial requirements. And then from there, I would extend that, uh, to bring in the additional context we got from the interviewers, just so I can sort of, uh, if I do that initial step first, I can sort of get a reaction from the interviewer and have something a little bit simpler to work on first. And then once I sort of gauge the interviewer's reaction and see that, okay, I'm on the right track, I can bring that additional complexity in. And then in the future steps, I'm just going to do all of it at once. So, okay. So for conceptual modeling, this is probably a review, but we want to ask ourselves what entities we want to keep track of and how do they relate to each other? And you saw before we sort of started thinking about that, where there's entities, I mean, sorry, there's books and those, there's transactions that occur with them. There's members members that are doing the transaction. So, okay, I sort of have a picture on my mind. Um, and from here, I'm basically ready to start whiteboarding. Okay. okay, so here we are at the whiteboard. And again, we're basically just going to take our initial set of requirements that you see up there on the left side. Uh, and we're going to create an initial conceptual model from that. And then we're going to take it and extend it to bring in the additional requirements that we got when we asked those clarifying questions to the interviewer. Um, okay. So we'll basically start from, uh, the top down, right? So it says library can contain multiple copies of the same book. Okay. So most, so multiple copies of the same book. And so it sounds like you're going to have a book. Uh, or let's um, remember kind of thinking ahead, we realize there's also going to be magazines. So instead of calling it a book, let's call it a product. So you're going to have a product that's either a book or a magazine, and then there's going to be multiple copies of it. So the way I would model this is, so maybe what you can do is let's say we have one entity and we'll call it a product. Okay, so that's our product entity. And so that will be, uh, that will tell us what product we have. And then to track multiple instances, we'll have what's called a product item. And that's going to track the multiple instances um, of the book or magazine or whatever it is. Um, and then we can kind of do this right away. We're like, what do we think the relationship is going to be between them? Um, 
So they're likely going to be, and so we kind of already said it, that one product is going to have multiple instances of a product item. So, so one product will always have multiple instances. Um, and one instance will only be connected to one product. So that's going to be our lower and upper bound, um, like we did right there. And then we can think about what's going to be the lower bound of a product. Um, so what I'm going to say is that if the library is keeping track of a product, that means they have at least one uh, copy of it. So we're going to keep uh, that as uh, one as our lower bound. So one product will have will have a one to many. So product to product item is going to be one to many relationship. Um, OK, and then. Uh, kind of going down the list, library tracks copies which are checked out. So checked outs are the transactions that we were talking about occurring. But we can honestly, we can honestly just call them checkouts. So let's call it item checkouts. Item checkouts is going to be, and let me actually just move it so you can see it a little better. Uh, I'm uh, gonna put that out of the way. Okay, so yeah, so you have item checkouts is going to be uh, what the instances where someone checks something out. Okay, so that's going to be another entity, and kind of from what we have so far, we know that an item is what's going to be checked out. So there's going to be a relationship like that. Um, a checkout is always going to have some item that was checked out, so it's going to be a one, and a, we'll say one record will only have we'll track one checkout and. We obviously know like a product is going to be someone's going to check something out. It's going to be returned. Someone else is going to check it out. So an item can have multiple checkouts, right? So that's going to be the upper bound uh, like this. Uh, now, what's the lower bound? Um, so you could end up having copies in a library that's never checked out. You could have 10 copies of a book. Let's say it's unpopular. So certain copies are never checked out. So what you can do is we're going to have that zero as our uh, lower bound. Okay, um, keep moving on. The historical record of how many times a book has been checked out, um, that's sort of taken care of already uh, with the item checkouts entity that we just created. Um, so we, we're kind of good, seems like we're kind of good there. Uh, keep going down, library has a members who can check out the books. So, okay, so I want to keep track of members. So that's going to be a member entity, member. Um, just iPad. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep track of members. So that's gonna be my entity. And so the member is the one who's doing the checkout. So there's gonna be some relationship like that. So so now what can we say that? A checkout, we kind of know that a checkout is always going to have a member. Someone is going to check. If something's been checked out, it's a member who did it. So a checkout will always have one and that's gonna be the lower end upper bound. Um, you're not going to have multiple in one record in the item checkouts table. It's only going to be related to one member. So it's always going to be the lower and upper because if multiple people check the same item out, that's going to be two different records in item checkouts. So, okay, we're good there. So um, a member can obviously check out multiple books uh, or multiple products. So that's going to be our many. Now, what's the lower bound? So probably not realistic, but you could have people who get a membership and never check out items. So maybe something like an employee who never checks out books. So that's something is possible that is possible. So we'll have that as our lower bound. Okay. And so this one kind of going to review, step back, and it seems like I'm pretty good where um so this is basically our initial uh conceptual model where we have our entities from our initial requirements and we're keeping track. And so again, if we created our entities. So this is kind of what we created, right? We have products that tracks a book that, that tracks books or magazines or what have you that exists. Product item is going to track individual copies. Item checkouts contains a record of the books being checked out. Members are the ones who check out books and members and product. Yeah. So then this, this one point here. So member and product item have a many to many relationships with item checkouts being the junction table. So what that means here is that this is what basically has the many. So we remember we had that requirement of one, there being at least one many to many relationship. So there is a many to many relationship here between member and product item, but we have item checkouts here. That's basically serving as the junction table to connect them. Um, okay. So 
this is pretty much our uh, initial ERD. Uh, and what I would do at this point is basically go on to uh, extend it and bring in those additional requirements that we had, right? So what I'm gonna do is sort of go back to my whiteboard and I actually have it set up already where here we have our, uh, this is, so on the top top left, you see the initial, the additional requirements and then we have the entities uh, that we already created in the uh, initial ERD. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is just put those uh, relationships back in. Uh, so let me move this a little bit. Okay, so we had, now we had, uh, let me do this. So we had member and item checkouts. There was one, zero to many. Uh, item checkouts had many to, one to many with product items. And that was our, uh, let's see, it's kind of a little sloppy. What I'll do is uh, go back, do this. Like that, uh, product and product item was one, one to many, right? Like that, and um, okay, and looks like we're we're kind of set from here. Okay, so this was our initial one, and now we're going to think about how we're going to extend it to bring in the initial the additional requirements that we got when we clarified uh, what we're going to do. So okay, so. The so again top down in addition to books and library also has periodicals so a magazine that kind of multiple issues uh, many copies of the same periodical issue so the way I'm going to actually decide to keep track of this um, okay so first we should step back and actually understand uh, what uh, what that means so you can have a magazine which is going to have multiple issues then an issue can have multiple copies. So that's sort of an, an additional level to what we already have here with product, where, um, so let's say a magazine is going to be people, the people magazine, right? Um, and then there's multiple issue, there's multiple issues of the people magazine, right? So there's one for September, October, November, December, forever, every year, right? So every, let's say every month there's a new, there's a new issue, then each issue can have multiple copies. So, so that since that's three levels, we basically only have two levels here so far. So if we said the most granular one was keeping track of multiple copies, so that's sort of level three. So I can say that uh, level three is here, uh, product item is three. So then we could, if we went one more back, so every month's issue is two. Uh, um, so every month's issue is two, so that's the second level. But we don't have an, a, the first level to keep track of a, just People Magazine or something. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna track it as is another entity called Product Line. So Product Line could be, let's say, the um, actual magazine that's publishing multiple issues, or um, it could be like a book that has multiple. Um, it could also be a book that has multiple uh, issues. So let's say Harry Potter, right? So Harry Potter can be our product line. The individual books, uh, parts one through seven are gonna be the product. And then the multiple copies of each individual part is going to be product item. So you see, so this is sort of gonna be our level one if we went in that same uh, uh, granular order, right? So, okay, so we're gonna have multiple, uh, multiple products within our product line, right? So. You're going to have multiple within one. And then how many, and then we're kind of going to say the same thing where if there's a product, if there's a product, that's the only time you're going to keep track of the product line. So our lower bound is going to be one. Um, okay. So now this sort of takes care of, uh, let me just, oh, actually let me move this a little bit so you can see a little better. Um, and I'll also erase this stuff here. Okay. So there you see sort of our product line and product relationship. So, uh, so this is very top level, number one, all the way to the most granular, which is going to be our number three. Um, okay. And then if we sort of keep going from here, uh, library keeps track of authors and publishers, right? So 
for authors and publishers, uh, let's say that we're going to have that be an attribute or have that joint at the product level, right? So over here, uh, over there. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to create two entities. I'm going to create publisher. And then I'm also going to create author. So these are two separate entities. So those join, don't join to each other, but they basically join the product, right? And uh, a publisher can publish multiple products and author can write multiple products. So, uh, so let's say that. And then we're going to say that. So they both have a one to many relationship with product. Right. Um, and one, and another way to think of this is again, let's, let's use Harry Potter as an example. So actually, oh, we kind of know who the author is, but let's say you have a book with multiple parts. So the multiple parts are going to be here in product. Um, and what you could say is that, uh, each part might have multiple authors. So not, it's not that everybody who wrote part one is involved in part two. It might, it might be different if authors change over the years, um, different people extend it and so on. So that's a use case you might have to handle. So this design would help us handle that where, uh, this is going to keep track of authors at an individual product level. Um, and since it can change, um, that's why I'm deciding to keep track of it at the product level instead of product item or at product line. All right. Um, and again, so again, so that's a design decision I just made. Uh, if I were in an actual whiteboarding interview, I would have sort of talked to my interviewer about that and said that I'm deciding to put publisher and author like this because of X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, okay. So we're good with author and publishers. Uh, moving on. Library memberships are given to members. So, okay. So it looks like what we're going to have is a member. Is a membership type. Membership type um, entity. And that is what's going to join to member. Um, and actually, I'll put it this way so it's a little bit more clear. But uh, one member, uh, one member is always going to have one membership type, right? So you're not going to have multiple. So they're only going to have one. But a membership type there can be multiple members with the same type. So that's going to be a many. And what we could also say is that we're only keeping track of the uh, possible membership types that people have. So what we can do is like have, we'll have a one as the lower bound. So one to many relationship between membership types and member. Um, okay. And if we went to our uh, last one, our uh, Sorry, not last one, but uh, so if we went on require uh, next next requirement was each year has a member next number of books. Uh, that sounds like that's an attribute, so that's going to come into membership type. But I don't need to have that in my conceptual design because that's an attribute. Um, next requirement is uh, database also tracks employees, so employees is going to be a type of member. All right, so it's not necessarily a membership type, but it's um, we'll we'll think of it as another entity because let's say in addition. So for a member entity, there's certain attributes that the library is going to keep track of. But when someone's employee and an employee, they might keep track of other attributes that they don't track for other members. So because of that, I'm going to have an employee as its own entity. So that's going to be a different entity. And that's basically going to join uh, to members somehow, right? And so one employee is going to have one, only one record as a member, um, right? So it's going to have, it's going to be one-to-one -one, where an employee is only a member one time. So actually what I'll do is sort of move this so it's a little easier to see. Um, and let me just put that back like this. Um, that. And employee is going to join to member and it's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship where a member will only be a member may be joined to one employee, but it's not necessarily obviously not every member is going to be an employee. So the lower bound is going to be zero. Um, but if they are connected, it's going to be a one to one relationship. Um, but for employee to member, it's going to be one is going to be the upper and lower bound because every employee has a membership and uh, they only have one membership. They don't have multiple. 
Um, then the last requirement there you see is the late fee penalties. Um, again, that's going to be, that's just going to be an attribute of the membership type. So I don't really need to keep track of, um, another entity for that. Um, okay. And this kind of looks good to me where again, I would kind of step back, uh, talk to the interviewer and see if they have any feedback, what they think. But from our requirements, this sort of satisfies our need, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the slides. Okay, and this was our additional requirements that we sort of just went through and did the exercise for. And we end up with this as our conceptual model, right? Um, and basically, uh, so you could uh, pause the video here, uh, take a screenshot if you wanted of uh, the neater design. But basically, this, this is the additional uh, entities we added in. Product line, uh, which is a higher grain than product that's going to be track. Uh, it's going to track periodicals, or we use Harry Potter as, a, as an example to um, sort of explain what the relationships are. Uh, publisher and author is tracked at the product level, and we have an example there we talked about. Um, and like before, uh, members still, so the things that stays the same, a member is still borrowing uh, product items through uh, item checkouts, uh, mem but we also added the membership type. Uh, membership type entity, and we have employee tracked as a member as well through that other entity. And the additional uh, attribute details that were on the page uh, in those requirements, we're going to be tracking through the uh, membership. Uh, we're going to be tracking in the membership type entity. So, and that's pretty much it. So after that, this is basically our complete conceptual model, right? So keep going, and then next thing we would go into is a logical model, right? So from here, uh, we wanted to ask ourselves, what are the attributes you want to add to the conceptual model? So basically, if we went back to our requirements and we sort of only took out the details about attributes, uh, we would see, we would see how we needed to extend our conceptual model to bring in the attributes. Basically, what attributes are we going to add there? So things like, uh, copies being checked out, historical record that tells me about date attributes that are needed. Uh, the thing about uh, max number of books and late fee penalties, those are attributes for membership types um, and, and uh, employees having their own membership tier. So that's uh, a join you're going to have to the membership type dimension, right? So again, go back to our whiteboard and basically extend the conceptual model to add in that.